Hiya, my name is Joss, I'm from Edub Services and today I am super excited to talk to you about our brand new e-scoot. Hi Roxy, lovely to get you in this video. Um, so, the big question on everyone's minds at the moment is, well on my mind anyway when I'm talking about this Vespa is, is it better than its original counterpart? As you may have guessed, as Edub Services what we specialise in is converting vehicles, classic vehicles into electric, so that's exactly what we've done here. So we're going to go through a few things. Is it as fun to drive? Is it as kind to the environment? Is it as easy and uh, intuitive to use? Um, and answer at the end, hopefully, the big question of, is it better than its petrol equivalent? Let's give it a go. I'd like to take this opportunity on this beautiful overcast day to have a little walk around the vehicle, show you uh, under the hood, so to speak. First thing you might notice is that we've got a battery in place of where the engine was. It's a 2.2 kilowatt hour battery. It's fully removable. So you can just undo that strap, just take it inside, plug it in your living room, wherever you choose to charge it. You don't need any off-street parking or anything like that. One of the really neat things about this is that we've only had to drill five holes into the original body of this vehicle, which means that it retains so much of its original value as a classic T5 Vespa. If you want to take a little walk around the vehicle with me. One thing you might not notice is that inside that rear wheel is a tiny little hub motor. It's a beautiful space efficient sort of thing, uh, and that's what drives your rear wheel. Down here we've got our controller and a 12 volt system that powers all of our LEDs, uh, powers the horn, all sorts of little gubbins like that. One thing I think is super clever is we've got a little USB here, and we're able to jack in with our laptop, talk to the controller, tweak any little settings we like to tweak, and make sure it's working at peak efficiency. The next thing I want to talk about is ease of use. Now, with an original T5 Vespa with a petrol engine, what you'd have to do is warm yourself up warm the engine up, give it a few kick starts, rev the engine, annoy the neighbors, get yourself knackered, and after that, you might be ready for a little trip around the block. Now, with this e-scoop, all you gotta do is flip the key, wait a few seconds for the thing to do its safety checks, you'll hear a chime, and you're ready to go. So, we've designed this e-scoop to be a 49cc equivalent, which means you can drive it on your 50cc license pretty cool. What's interesting about electric scooters is that that only has to be a 49cc average power, which means we can tune it up when you use things like Accelerate, so we can do stuff like this. Ah! <laughs> So this is the engine we pulled out of that T5 Vespa. This ran at about 85 miles per gallon, which is a bit rubbish, even by classic scooter standards. But now we've taken it out, it can realize its full potential as all sorts of things, like a pencil case. A paperweight. A pillow. A bookmark. A stool so deck can reach really high things on very tall shelves. Got it? Whatever you choose to do with your old engine, we won't judge. Now, over to Joss for the next segment. Thanks Joss. Now, let's talk about charging for a second. This is the charger. That's it. All you need. It's a three pin plug. You can plug it in next to your laptop in your living room if you choose to. 
This will do a full charge in about five hours time. Now you can choose to mount this on your wall in your garage if you have off street parking. But the beauty about this is you don't need an electrician to come in and put new power lines through your walls and things like that. That's as easy as it comes. Now, a real good idea is for you to maybe buy another one of these batteries and then you've got two that you can swap over and have an instant recharge. It's easy to pick up an e-scoot from our website at edubconversions.co.uk forward slash e-scoots. We'll take, up all the, take care of all the paperwork, we'll write to the DVLA and get your tax class changed so that you don't have to pay a single penny in road tax. What's really cool as well is if you're lucky enough to have solar panels, you'll be able to plug this into your solar panels and get it charged up for free, which gives you a zero cost commute. You've heard enough from me about the scooter, but let's talk to the real brains behind the operation, Kit Lacey. So, Kit, let's talk to these guys about what makes you tick and what your inspiration was behind doing this project in particular. We're, we're more familiar with, with these guys, aren't we? With, with big camper vans, preferably, preferably green. Um, we will accept campers of other colours, um, but green is our preference. Um, the beauty of the campers is that they're, they're something that's retro, they're something that's got a real strong cultural following, but they're actually the way they run and the way they perform is pretty pants. So if we can keep as much of that retro aspect as possible, but change how it drives, then that's a win-win. That's, that's kind of been the, the core thread culture of E-dubs right from the beginning, whether we've been aware of it or not. It was kind of natural step over to look at Vespers instead. Yeah. So ideally the next scooter we get is going to be green. Then. Yeah. That would suit us perfectly. <laughs> I think there's some, yeah, again, subliminal effect that it has on us when we work on a vehicle that's not green. If it doesn't look like a plant, I don't want to work on it. Well, you could argue red plants exist. I've seen evidence. <laughs> I've heard of red plants. <laughs> Some exist around the world. Talk to me about the kind of process in like, what made you decide on specific components that have gone into this uh, vehicle. So we happen to have a guy uh, or a company uh, down the road in, in Nairsworth, the next town over, um, who specialise in... Uh, complete drivetrain units. So that's battery pack, controllers, motors, and, and all sorts of other bits and pieces. So everything in, in here is from the same company designed to talk to each other from kind of its inception. Yeah, pretty much. The The ideal plan was to use a complete kit from, from this particular supplier. Um, over the, the months, or over the full year actually, we've been developing this kit, a few items have been swapped out for alternatives that, that do a a slightly more sympathetic or better job to the particular vehicle. Like what, for instance? So the two main ones are the motor. We elected to go for a hub motor, so it's that hub, as you mentioned, straight within the wheel. Yeah, it's so tidy, I love that. It's so tidy, it's less moving parts, it's less things that can go wrong. Your power is instant into the wheel rather than into a chain or a, or a belt or a slack. Um, and again, less parts that can go wrong get broken. Yeah. Um, so we absolutely love that. And the other item is that these Kits normally come with a quite a modern looking LED display, yeah. and it was an option potentially to build something into it, but we're, we're, we thought actually we'd rather keep the original as much as possible. There's plenty of electric scooters going about that are all, you know, pristine and slick and LEDs all over the place, digital displays, so let's, let's do something different to that. And keep it that classic, again, as I said before, the, the, the culture of the Vespa is one of the main reasons for doing this. Yeah. And so if you change too much about the Vespa, about how it looks, how it performs, then it kind of loses a bit of that. So we'd rather keep as much of that as possible. How much of this Vespa is to its original value as it was before we got our grubby little hands on it? So T5 Vespas, if you go on eBay, range anywhere between 2,000 and 3,500 to buy one. Um, the engines of that component are somewhere around 400 pounds. Yeah. So if you think you remove that component of the of the vehicle, and you're still left with a, a design piece that's functional and is worth something and has a, a particular legacy. Yeah. Um, so we were very aware of that and very aware about saying, okay, rather than, again, rather than trying to butcher it, quote unquote, and try and create something that really, um, whether, it's, whether it's welding bits on or bolting bits on or screwing loads of holes in, 
Um, we just didn't love that because you do too much of that and the Vespa loses its appeal. Well, that's something I've noticed whenever I've asked you, can I drill a hole in this green camper, for instance? You're like, no. Only if you absolutely freaking no. have to. No is the normal answer. Generally, absolutely not. Yeah, yeah, absolutely not. The other advantage of that is as well, it makes our installation much quicker. So the, the costing of these conversions that we do, so much of it is the, the research and development and the time it takes guys like you and me and the rest of the team to actually put them together. And if that assembly is too difficult, if our design team are able to create some really intricate things to mount precisely, and it just gets messy and it gets, it gets long and it gets expensive. Yeah. So instead, let's take something, so like the, the, the original engine was part of, um, it was on a mount system on the suspension arm. Yeah. So we took those same mounting points, one is on the rear suspension arm and two just underneath the foot plate here. Took those same places but made a kind of horseshoe shape uh, wishbone suspension, um, which works perfectly and hooks up to the hub motor. So what you're saying is the less hours that we have to put into converting this is the less hours you have to pay me to do the conversion. Yes, so and then the less hours, but, <laughs> no, but then you get to do more. You're, oh, you're, you're more you just do more of them, oh, so okay. you're still fine. I'm done. But each individual customer pays less. So that's the that's the goal. <laughs> You're okay. <laughs> I love the followings of them. They're just the people go nuts about these things. It's great. It's really good fun. 300 mirrors on the Yeah, that's an additional upgrade. Yeah. You're you not allowed two mirrors. mirrors. You're not allowed two mirrors. <laughs> we must have ten. <laughs> we don't sell them as two. <laughs> go down that yeah, let's go down that road. Because we were lucky enough... Um, Kit was really lucky enough to have a Vespa when he was 16, 17. I had a uh, Chinese knockoff, I think, at some point a long time. Did you not have my Vespa? Has it not gone round the family? I probably wrote it off. I know what you mean. <laughs> it was written off by someone. It, it wasn't me. What? No. <laughs> Crazy. Um, I, yeah, so you were 16 years old, and what? tell me about your scooter. So, I'm, I, you and I both are the wrong generation to have a genuine, original, you know, classic nostalgia about these vehicles. Nothing we can do about that. I'm sorry, guys, but we can't be old. Nothing we can do. <laughs> um, we've tried. We can look old. <laughs> we can definitely try that. <laughs> Note to self. <laughs> Grow white beard. Yes. <laughs> dye beard white. Yeah. Grow beard. <laughs> Step B, dye beard white. Um, but the, I forgot the question. <laughs> so I, um, I actually did a year's gap year after leaving school. And then um, I started with a year's course after that in um, Bradford. And it was a 40 minute drive going back. So it was, well, you know, open road, teenager, a scooter's going to be ideal. And me being me, didn't just want to go for a Chinese knockoff scooter. Um, I said, well, if I'm going to get a scooter, I'd love a Vespa because it's just the cool colour. <laughs> because I couldn't choose the Vespa. It was like purple. It was plum. Plum, sorry. It was plum. <laughs> it wasn't purple. <laughs> it was the most the kind of subtly effeminate colour. <laughs> it wasn't even like it was a garish pink or yellow or something like that. It was fit, though, because it was a Vespa. Like. It was gorgeous because yeah, it was yeah. Vespa. But I, yeah, I felt gorgeous. On that bus, but you still look gorgeous. Yeah. I know, especially in slow mo, as we've established. <laughs> we should do some of that now. So, <laughs> so there you have it. Uh, brand new e scoop from Edog Services. I've had an absolute blast building this in the workshop. I've had an absolute blast driving it. I take it down to Moribots at every opportunity uh, just because it is that much fun to drive. Uh, if you want to find out more, you can do so at edogconversions.co.uk forward slash e uh, Prices start from £8,000, so feel free to go on the website and order yours today. Uh, that price includes the original T5 Vespa, fully restored, and our bespoke E-Dub uh, electrification pack as well. If you've enjoyed today's video, uh, feel free to like and subscribe, 
Give us a comment if you've got any questions. Tell your mates, get them to like and subscribe. Tell your mum, get her to like and subscribe. Tell your nan, get her to like and subscribe. I know you haven't spoken to her in a while. All right, she misses you. Call her. Seriously. If she doesn't have an iPad, buy her an iPad. With Christmas coming up soon, give, get her to like and subscribe. Uh, but other than that, it's been an absolute blast. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.